Good evening, this is Thomas Simpson here again with Afro Solo TV. We have a very special guest again. Our guest this time has been here in the San Francisco area for a long time. You will recognize his name. He has a fabulous partner who works with him. But tonight, we want to find out a little bit about him and this special project that he has coming to San Francisco. So, without much more talking from me, let's let him introduce himself to you. How are you doing? Introduce yourself, Idris. I'm Idris Akamor, and I'm the uh, founder and artistic co-artistic director of Cultural Odyssey, mm -hmm. which is uh, a San Francisco performing arts company that uh, I founded over close to 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how you first got started in the arts? Well, I mean, that's, I began music lessons even when I was very young. Mm -hmm. So my parents were of the inclination that their their children should have music lessons. So I mean I started taking uh, classes when I was eight, seven, eight years old. Wow. Yeah, so I've, I've been doing music all my life basically and when I, uh, since I can remember. So was music first or theater first? It, it's music different? Was that, no, I was, uh, uh, music was definitely first. Okay. I started playing all, I started playing instruments when I was young, mm -hmm. from seven to about maybe uh, 13. But then around that time, right around high school, I, I kind of, almost like I was, gave up music for like four years because I was into to basketball. I was into sports. I was mm -hmm. into like, you know, growing up being a teenager mm -hmm. and going to uh, Chicago. Okay, Chicago. Chicago, okay. South Side. Okay. And, um, so that was, you know, I, I, I just really was not, gave up, it was like a, I took a break from music for those four years mm -hmm. and came back to it at some point in the first year of college. Okay. Now, during that interim period, did you get involved with theater at all, or you just gave no, up was, all, was all just, sports? No, I was all sports. Okay. okay. I was, you know, I was definitely a, you might call it jock. I was just <laughs> okay. going to play basketball, and my summers were filled with playing basketball on the streets of, uh, at the street courts in Chicago, and, and you know, and, and partying, you mm -hmm. know, the whole Motown. I was, the music, what, that was really, I became very uh, fascinated by, of course, in that, in, in that time, was you know dance music, yeah. Motown, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, Temptations, Temptations, mm -hmm. right? And, uh, Martha and the Martha Van Reeves, Gellers, Martha Supremes, Reeves and the that's yes. right. That okay, old, that old, old school. Mm -hmm. And you sort of took an arts holiday, you might say, during that time. That's what I did. I definitely took an arts holiday. But something happened somewhere along the line, and you got back interested in the arts again. Yes, Actually, what happened? You know, well. I, I went to a small, I, from high school, graduated from high school, I was in Chicago. I got a, a part scholarship to a small uh, liberal arts college called uh, Co College, you know, in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And I was going there to play basketball, basically. I mean, I didn't really know what I wanted to do, sure. who I wanted to be, but I knew that, well, I was playing basketball, so they wanted me to play basketball, I'll go, you know. So, <laughs> uh, But I, I didn't know that it was really a, the school was just, it, it was at that time, uh, at that time, it was like 1968, 69, 1969. Mm -hmm. Actually, 1968 was my freshman year in college. And of course, that was one of, you know, you're hearing all these uh, publicity now about 1968 being the most important year of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. And because everything, so much had happened in that year. I mean, mm -hmm. Martin Luther King was assassinated. Mm -hmm. um, Robert Kennedy was assassinated. Mm -hmm. There was the, the, the riots in the mm -hmm. Democratic Convention in Chicago. Mm -hmm. So all of this stuff, I was particularly affected by in many ways. I mean, I was in Chicago. I remember the, the Democratic Convention. I remember uh, uh, King's assassination. And that was also the beginning of the Black Power Movement. Mm -hmm. So we were really trying to find, I think, uh, find out who who we are and where we wanted to go. But at that time, you know, that was just, I was at the cusp yeah. of that. Mm -hmm. And I realized that, you know, basketball was not in my future. Mm -hmm. But I played the first season and I had brought I had brought my tenor saxophone with me to college even mm -hmm. though I hadn't been playing it and a friend of mine who was also from Chicago was up on the co campus so it was only like 57 blacks on the whole campus at Cole College okay but he was a trumpet player named Al Waters a fabulous trumpet player and he asked me to uh, join a band and I said Al well you know I haven't been playing my I haven't played my instrument in like three or four years he said well come on now Baker come on <laughs> you, can, you can come on and play a couple of notes for me and <laughs> I brought my sax back out and got out of Dodge, as they say. I got out of Co College. I knew I had to leave. Okay. And I, I went back to Chicago and really started to intensively 
intensely study mm -hmm. saxophone. Mm -hmm. So from the experience of um, what was happening for you in college and what was happening in the black arts movement, all the excitement around that, so you know, took you right back to maybe home, which is where arts were for you. That's right. And at some point, you grew and established, came to San Francisco, mm -hmm. and you decided to have your own company. How did that happen? Well, I mean, you know, once I graduated, I, cause I, I, I made the, uh, the transition to Antioch College. I went to, uh, once, I, once I came back to Chicago, and uh, I, I took a, a quarter at the University of Illinois Chicago Circle, but I applied to Antioch College and was accepted. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really, really okay. became very immersed in music. And my, I, that was my major, and that was my formative, the formative years as me as a, as a musician. I was starting to begin my own groups, mm -hmm. forming my own groups. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, majoring in music composition and studying seriously on a collegiate level. Mm -hmm. And, uh, of course, that's when I... Uh, my last year, I took a year uh, abroad mm -hmm. where I went to Europe and Africa for a, a year, wow. you know, and in and, and Europe I formed this very kind of underground legendary group called the Pyramids. Mm -hmm. And we began working throughout Europe, but mostly in Holland. Mm -hmm. uh, and for like, we worked in Holland for about four months before we left and went to Africa. Wow. And that, that period that we were in Africa was really, it was like the, 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 the time that was a transforming period uh, where, we st where I studied African music, collected African instruments, costumes, wow. and played with African musicians all over the, all, mostly oh. in Ghana, mm -hmm. but also in Kenya, wow. and studying in Ethiopia. Wow. So um, even traveling to Uganda, right at, at, right at the point where, where in Idi Amin came to power. Okay. So, um, well, you know what? If maybe if you had had a chance to play for him, you may have changed his whole life around. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a thought. Mm -hmm. Um, so in terms of your getting involved with the music and having traveled, been in the U.S., gone to Europe, and uh, spent time in Africa, who would you say were some of your major influences or who were your idols at that time? Well, I think my one of my a major influence I always say was my mother. Okay. My, my, my parents, I put them before being influenced by anybody. Okay. You know, they were the ones that got me into music. They were the ones that supported my interest. Uh, they were always there for me. Um, after my parents, after my mother, after my father came, I guess, family. Okay. You know, but just speaking artistically, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, at one point I began to listen, of course, to John Coltrane and Eric Dolphy. Uh, Sun Ra, uh, Art Ensemble Chicago, um, Charles Tyler, some of these more uh, obscure, but people know who are in, who are in the know, mm -hmm. know like Charles Tyler was one of the, was a Albert Eiler's alto player. Mm -hmm. And um, at one of my, at, at Antioch you had co-ops, mm -hmm. which basically meant that you studied half of the year on campus and the other half you went to work in some city around the country, wow. you know, and uh, my first co-op, well, my second co-op was actually, I went all the way out to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And that's where I really began, I think, you know, really my career as a performing, as a musician. Mm -hmm. I started to put together, you know, because at that point in, in LA, there was this underground jazz scene mm -hmm. of an incredible, this incredible scene going on. Mm -hmm. Jazz musicians playing and studying and woodshedding. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was, you, know, you were supposed to like get a buddy that you could woodshed with. Wow. And then you would like trade exercises and, 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 and knowledge, you know. And at the same time, you met this, uh, you met a, a, the scene out there, mm -hmm. and I put together a band, which was my cousin was playing. My cousin was playing drums. Mm -hmm. I met these. Uh, I met a kunga player named Amin Ra, mm -hmm. and a bass player named Noah, and we would just go from beach to beach, set up, and we would play outside, outside wow. beach Acoustic. to beach, acoustically, wow. and get for, for tips. But mm -hmm. at that same time, I met Charles Tyler, mm -hmm. who kind of Charles kind of took me under his wing mm -hmm. and began to show me things and. And I started to play with his little, his trio that he had, mm -hmm. and Charles was uh, an amazing alto player, who's uh, who's like passed, but he was one of Al he was Albert Eiler's alto player for the at the, at those really crucial periods like the town hall concert and for that and create that crazy uh, album called Ghosts. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know, these, these are the people that know about that. Are in know the about know. that. 